All right, so question 17 says, write down the terms indicated in the binomial expansion of the following and simplify your answers. So, of course, the way they are written, if you try to pay attention, <coughs> they are written in a form that um, you'd have to do a bit of some calculations for you to predict the term to contain x to the power 5. But, of course, um, I don't have to confuse you or waste a lot of your time. Whether you, you reverse it, I think reversing is better. So, just do that. Um, for the first one, of course, we're very familiar with the simple questions where they ask you to find the n if term, let's say 6 if term. We understand our formula that we use is n choose r. And then, of course, r we start counting from 0. So the 6 if term is obviously going to be where r is equal to 5. So our a will be raised to the power of the difference between n and r, and then x will be just like uh, the power the value of r so that way you see that it's actually faster and easier if you put x because x is matching up with r if it's on the second part of the expansion okay so even if we leave it the way it is let's take it um, x plus 2 raised to the power 8 so what we're going to do is we'll do a bit of tricky um, work but i know some of you may get confused so i'll just start with the, the, the coefficient or the constant 2 plus x raised to the power 8 so the 8 choose r which is um, matching up with the power of x so 5 and then a is is 2 so 2 to the power n minus r 8 minus 5 is 3 and then multiply by x to the power r x to the power 5. So this is definitely the term. Okay. So 8 choose 5 multiply by 2 to the power 3 is 8 x to the power 5. So I've really labored to explain the coefficients for you. So I believe at this point you're very confident enough to simplify beyond that point. In cases where you've run out of time, leave it there. It's okay. But if you've got time, simplify to a point where we can just see the number. 8 choose 5 is very easy to simplify. Okay. So apply the same concept to answer these other questions. Pause the video and try them out. So if I start with negative 2 plus 3u, raised to the power 5. And then n choose r. n is what? 5. r, in this case, 1 to the power of 3 on u. So, choose negative 2, raise the power <coughs> 5 minus 3, which is a 2, and then 3u raise the power 3. This one I can even simplify. I don't have, it's not like it's going to. So, 5 factorial, 5 minus 3 in the brackets, factorial, and then 3 factorial. Negative 2 squared is 4. 3 to the power 3 is 27. <coughs> because 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. U to the power 3. 5 factorial can be simplified to just remain 5 by 4. On the denominator, you remain with 2 factorial, 3 factorial. And then multiply by 4, multiply by 27. Multiply by u to the power 3. Now, 3 factorial can be expanded to make things simpler. Yeah? 2 factorial to start with is 2 times 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. 3 there is 1, 3 there is 9. 2 there is 1, 2 there is 2. 2 there is 1, 2 there is 2. 2 times 5, 10. Times 2, 20. Now, 20 times 9. Is one eight? Is it? <laughs> I hope my calculations are okay there. Three into twenty-seven is nine. Nine times two is eighteen. Eighteen times ten is one eighty. If my simplifications are okay, this should reduce to one eighty, and then that's now u to the power u to the power three. Um, 
try out the, the last one. Negative half plus two t. The power is seven. Oh, the power is twelve. So n is twelve. Choose seven. Negative half will be raised to power twelve minus seven is what? Five. And then multiply by two t raised to the power seven. 12 to 7, negative half to the power 5 remains the negative. Uh, 1 to the power 5 is 32. And then 2t to the power 7, to the power 5 is 32, to the power 6 is 64, 128. t to the power 7. Now 32 in 64 is 2 times, in 128 it's uh, 4 times. So we can just end up with a negative 4, 12, choose 7, uh, t to the power 7. I think I can just end it. I can leave it there. Negative 4, choose 12, out of 5. Oh, 12, choose 7. Yeah, and that's fine. <coughs> okay, so that's it. You can simplify it beyond that point. I'll leave that to you. But this is basically how you basically get the time, the terms indicated. And for some of you who want to break or think more, this is basically just one and the same. <clears throat> I can go back to the first one. If you want to expand it as it is given there, you can, since you know that x is going to be reducing, you ask yourself, in what, at what term, after reducing, will it be x to the power 5? So it's obviously going to be, since you start with, uh, you're going to start with like 8, so 8, Seven, six, five. So it will be on the third, on the fourth term, where r is equal to three. Since you start from zero, it's zero, th one, two, and three. So that would mean that you're going to have eight choose three, and then x to the power five, two to the power three. Basically, if you simplify this, it's basically going to give you the same result that we found in the first place. Okay. Now, let's look at the question 18 and 19. So, question 18 and 19 are focusing on showing that these are equal to, that the left is equal to the right hand side. So, let's start with um, 18 n choose so these ones are not as easy in fact they're not as hard as they look they're too simple so n choose r is equal to n n minus r so these basically are coefficients okay so i'll start with the left hand side <laughs> left hand side for 18 the left hand side is equal to n r n r means n factorial <coughs> subtract by r fact and then r factorial that's what it means nothing more nothing less we can go to the right hand side the right hand side there means n factorial over n. Now we are subtracting the n minus r. n minus r factorial and then again n minus r factorial. Okay. So remember this is like the formula. So where there is R now, we've got N minus R for the right hand side. <coughs> so we've got N factorial on top. Now if you subtract this in the brackets, N minus N is just 0. Now let's first of all distribute the negative here. So we're going to have N minus N plus R 
in the brackets. We've got factorial, and then we've got n minus r factorial as well. If we get to simplify that, um, we remain with n factorial on top. Denominator n minus n is a zero. So we remain with r in the brackets, so that will be r factorial, and then we've got n minus r factorial. Now some of you can see that now this is just one and the same. All we just have to do is now reverse what we have on the bottom. So we've got n factorial. So I can now start with the n minus r factorial and then r factorial. So you can see that the left and the right hand side are one and the same. So since left hand side is equal to the right hand side, n's shown. <laughs> okay, that's how easy it is. They actually look more complicated, but when you actually get to solve them or simplify them, they are way easier. Now, at this point, you now have the confidence to try out the question, the next question, which is question 19, right? Here we are having a bit of some addition. <clears throat> just making the question more interesting. So if I start with the left hand side, 